Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D-Generation X proudly bring to you Off the Shelf Reviews Friday Retro Gaming here with Ian Buckingham. And I'm Gary. And we are here, Gary, playing WrestleMania Arcade. WrestleMania Arcade? Who's Jason? One of the z designers, I oh, suppose. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, giving us tips about how to play the game. Now, this looks like a very old school wrestling game, Ian. What... what? wrestling game is this is what wrestlemania is this this, Seven? this is this is like wrestlemania from i think it was 96 95 96 as you can see we've got lex luger and Shawn michaels there we've got bam bam bigelow in the game and razor ramon and doink the clown you remember doink the clown uh no <laughs> doink Dude. the clown there he is why isn't he like a member of like icp or something no no he was just a clown from a circus who decided he wanted to be a wrestler you know and came in and just started Messing around with people's matches. You've got Razor Ramon right. oozing with machismo. The wait Undertaker. Minute, I recognize that guy. Isn't, oh. Didn't he go by another name? Yeah, yeah. He became Scott Hall and went right. to WCW and joined the NWO and almost brought down the WWF back in the Monday Night Wars. And right, right, right. Yeah, we've got Yokozuna. Wasn't he like the largest or heaviest wrestler? Yeah, yeah. With a look, a look on his face like that, wouldn't wouldn't you have that <laughs> kind of title as well? We've got the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Now, I mean. Yeah. His, iconic 80s wrestler yeah his career is just spans time. i'm gonna say his and the undertaker i think is probably the most uh most infamous wrestlers there that you've gone through right now oh yeah well we got bam bam bigelow he had a few stints in wcw and ecw and wwf as well obviously he tattooed all over his foot is over his head right it's kind yeah. of iconic the excellence of execution, Mr. Bret Hart, man Another from legend. Canada. Yeah, you know, the Montreal screw job, if you've ever heard of that. That's one of the influential parts of wrestling. And then you've got the narcissist Lex Luger and well, I gotta say, I don't know much about this yeah, Lex Luger. Yeah, Lex Luger, he had a stint in WCW, then he went to WWE, then he went back to WCW, and they just couldn't do anything I, with I him. Think there's a lot of that going around, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there was a lot going on at the time. I'm there's just gonna... no, no, no brand loyalty with some of these wrestlers. Well, it was all about money, trying to get their from keep their families, you know, fed and stuff like that. So it was it was difficult of who you want to work. With. I'm gonna put it on easy, okay, um, okay. because. I really, really do love this game. I love all wrestling and mostly all wrestling games. Uh, but this one is super stupidly hard oh. if you stick it on like normal. So whatever difficulties do we have? Uh, we have easy, we have medium, we have hard. Okay. We have extreme. Right. And so. then we have get real. Okay. So. Uh... I don't think I've ever gone any higher than that. <laughs> you know, easy mm -hmm. because you get here and you're like oh yeah I know some of the combos and then the computer is just like I know all the combos and all the moves I'm just going to beat you maybe later I might just you do might, a might test just have, a, have a quick just gander a test. so we can see yeah. i got to check the controls uh, yeah, I, I want to see The Undertaker get beaten by Doink the Clown oh, no you don't want to see him <laughs> at Wrestlemania <laughs> no no you don't you don't Right, I just gotta set up some of these buttons. Yeah, R one and R one. Yeah, run. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to put that one there, and then the shoulder button. I'll put down there. Lift for right two, and yeah, I think that I think that's pretty good for pretty good for the buttons. Yeah, once you're set. Once I'm all set. Once 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 I let go, you know. Just, I'm just just playing with stuff. Just just playing, watching porn while I'm trying to hey. record a video here, <laughs> you know. And I'll, obviously I could go with my my boy, the Undertaker, yeah, you know. Undefeated. Oh no, wait. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, I had to bring it up. He's not undefeated at WrestleMania anymore. But to lose to Brock Lesnar, he's it's the Beast Incarnate. Well, you know. I mean go for the championship the, the, the undertaker is a legend from my childhood of watching wrestling i mean is he still wrestling now undertaker? He, he is still is wrestling. The only one on that roster is still wrestling well i mean on this game's roster on on this game's roster yeah he is the, literally the only guy still still having matches but at the same time you know the age the age factor comes in because jesus christ look at this I'm, i mean the, we're on easy fighting, are you fighting undertaker versus Yep, Undertaker yep. versus Lex Luger. Well, no, no, it's yeah, it's me as the Undertaker versus the Undertaker and Lex Luger for the, for the championship. In 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 this mode, you had Intercontinental mode. Right. Oh, he reversed it. Intercontinental mode, which put you on against one person at a time, and then you had the championship mode, which made you fight two people all the way to the end. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can see. Um, you can see now why I put it on easy because. Jeez, yeah. Come here, <laughs> come here. Inverted tombstone power driver. Yeah, get up from that. Undertaker dropped a tombstone on himself. 
Uh, um, yeah, you've never seen SummerSlam 94? No. Undertaker versus Undertaker? No. What? Oh, yeah. Back, at, back in 94, the Undertaker lost to Yokozuna at the Rumble, got set on fire. And then um, Ted DiBiase came back a couple of months later and said, look, I've got the power of green, I've got the money bucks, and I've bought the Undertaker's soul. And Paul Bearer was like, that's not true, my Undertaker wouldn't do that. And then they had one Undertaker versus another Undertaker at SummerSlam. Who played the other Undertaker? Uh, I can't remember the wrestler's name, but he did go on to play the fake Razor Ramon when Scott Hall <laughs> and Kevin Nash left for WCW. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this one guy's short stint in wrestling <laughs> career was the Undertaker double and, yeah. and, the, and, yeah, the and other, Scott Hall's and Scott Hall's under, under. double as well. God damn you, Lex Luger, you beat the crap out of me. Yeah, that's that's kind of harsh, isn't it? You know. Yeah. You you two two claims to fame are playing fake of versions. <laughs> get off me oh. wow so I mean I've seen uh, there's been I mean there's what free wrestling games every year you've got the ECW WCW wrestle you've got those Smackdowns you've got the Raws well not I mean, anymore now now it's just all, all WWE um, okay okay well I mean THQ kind of went under and they were like the forerunners in yep. wrestling games I yep. remember following their Smackdown and Raw games for a while uh, you know they had their career modes and yep. interactive moments with the wrestlers which was fun um, but uh, these old school I mean I'm pretty sure there was a wrestling game on the Nintendo yes uh, there was one on the Mega Drive yeah but um, they, they were they were all over They, I mean they started mainly in the arcades god damn you Undertaker this is my first arcades. match yeah what are, you, what are you doing are you doing a dance did uh, he just nut punch them <laughs> he's, he's supposed to punch you in and take your soul Right. That was my first match. I was hoping to do a hell of a lot better than that. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell which Undertaker was you, to, to be honest. So, uh, right, I'll go. I'll go with. I'll go with Shawn Michaels. Okay. You better see Shawn Michaels. Right, I'm the one with the red pants. You're right. Yeah, I know who I Shawn look. Michaels is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, when the other Shawn Michaels, if it comes up, I might have to fight two Shawn Michaels at once. Right. So you've got to make sure you know who whose pants you're looking at. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, wrestling games. I mean, they, obviously, the Japanese started it off with with a load of their games, and then. You know, the WWE started, well, WWF at the time started to put in their money's worth mm -hmm. into the arcades with Hulk Hogan and uh, Big Boss Man and stuff like that. Oh, I hit pause. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then people were just like, we wanted this to go to home console. So you had all the games on the Nintendo and the SNES. Ooh, nice moves. And all that kind of stuff. And then obviously the new generation started to come along and. Uh, I'd, I'd see at the same time this this came out at the same time just after of um, Mortal Kombat right okay and so obviously this is why We're seeing like you know um, character models that you know in still form look resemble their characters yeah they're not uh, pixels yeah they well, were they are pixels but yeah they were cam um, camera recorded Footage, you know yes, to, to yeah. doing their moves so this is actually Shawn Michaels doing his moves on camera and then yeah. it applied to it they've all got little fun manu maneuvers like that I mean I don't know what he's hitting me with He's, he hit me with a towel that explodes. God damn you, Lex Luger! <laughs> well, just like any other fighting game, this one looks like a pure button masher. I'm watching you at the moment. Just, yeah, I is know. There, is there is there much in terms of pulling the moves off? Yeah, Cause... there's there's few combos. I mean, with, like with the Undertaker, his his choke slam or his choke grab mm -hmm. is like down forward punch, and then fo that's your standard grab. God damn you guys! <laughs> God damn you! <laughs> They're mocking me now. It's because you pissed Lex Luger off. Yeah, you know? like, who? <laughs> I'm just going to show you now. Um, I mean, I don't know much of the moves for anybody else apart from The Undertaker because I, I usually win a lot with him because I've been practicing with him. And then I come on to record for the video and I get my ass handed to me. So. They've all got the different grabs. They've got. They have, they've actually got super fatalities as well. They've got fatalities. Isn't that just their finisher move? Yeah, well, I mean, in this one, you've got like Shawn Michaels who who drops the uh, heartbreak hotel bed on his opponent and squashes them. Okay. Uh, the Undertaker sticks them in a body bag and takes their soul. Uh, I think Lex Luger turns them into a gold statue. That's fine. Stop blocking me, God damn it! <laughs> so. God damn you. <laughs> damn. This is, is on it, easy. This is on easy mode. It's on easy. Wow. But you can you can see it from, from an arcade perspective. You know, it's like how it's do a, we, it's a coin eater. Yeah, yeah, how do how do we keep them coming back? You know, right, we'll make the guys like stupidly hard. The Mega Drive version is a lot easier, I remember. 
Yeah. Um, so I've got a question for you. You watch a lot of wrestling, in Yes. Um, when did finisher moves come into wrestling? When did commentators start going, that's that wrestler's finisher move? Oh, they were all... they always there? Did uh, but you know it was it, when did in story terms it become the fact that a wrestler did his finisher move that almost guarantees him the three count? Well, unless it's a pay per view. I mean, I, I, I suppose you're looking back in the back in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I said, all 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 of the wrestlers had their own finishing moves. Back back in the day, they were pretty not as not as good as you would see nowadays. Like they would just be elbows off the top rope oh he's yeah. dropping an elbow he's doing an elbow drop from the top rope that's his finisher you know macho yeah. man brandy savage there clotheslines as well um leg drops hulk hogan things like that they yeah. were pretty they were pretty easy yeah and it would just get the crowd all pumped up and then all of a sudden bang just drop his leg drop and that's and finish yeah after a while you know the, the the fans started to realize well you shouldn't just you know that wrestler's just done a leg drop how come his is not as powerful as Hulk Hogan's. Mm -hmm. So they had to start coming in with different moves, choke slams, uh, sharpshooters. A lot of the Canadian uh, wrestlers, yeah, they go for a more sub submission technical base basis. Yeah. So it was like, well, how can you know? We need to give them a finisher, something that's really devastating and quite painful, and we can adapt to the story. So we go for the knockouts in terms of. Or the arm dropping. Yeah, the ar yeah. arm bars and sharpshooters and ankle locks and things like that. So cross faces. Cross faces. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny, like, you take a, somebody like Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, mm -hmm. he didn't really have much of a finisher when he was doing his stint in WCW. Then he did a... And he goes to WWF and they give him a sleeper hold as his finisher because yeah. he was the ringmaster. And you're just like... A sleeper hold really <laughs> who, who, who the fuck taps out to a sleeper hold nowadays nobody nobody, no. nobody um and so obviously he had to come up with something else and that's where the the chin breaker basically came into it it wouldn't yeah. become the stunner until he added he added his knee uh, yeah. his his kick to their gut sorry yeah and then that just that just made that one move yeah spectacular because he he got the drop on his opponent god damn you Shawn Michaels chin bastard so what's the most devastating finisher and you, do you think in oh, wrestling in, in in all of wrestling yeah it's got to be at least the canadian destroyer that's yeah. one of my all-time favorite m moves the canadian destroyer is basically uh the uh, guy i can't remember what the wrestler's name is now but the guy sets sets up his opponent to do a normal pile driver yeah um but then he flips over them okay so that they flip with him and then he he basically does a front flip pile that, driver damn yeah Wow. Look at look it up, Canadian yeah. Destroyer. It's absolutely devastating. Well, I'm guessing it's going to take a pretty, I mean, uh, agile, athletic. Both of them are going to have to be pretty agile in order yeah. to pull off the move. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to pull off of with anybody. I mean, over the years, obviously, um, moves have become banned. You know, pile drivers after Stone Cold Steve Austin got his neck broken um, yeah. by Owen Hart, they weren't able to do jumping tombstone power drivers anymore because it was yeah. just too dangerous you know yeah. after kevin nash dropped the big show on his neck trying yeah. to pull off the jackknife power bomb they were like that's too too dangerous you can't do that move anymore yeah i remember for a short stint they wouldn't allow the, the undertaker to do the tombstone so yeah. that's why he went to the last ride right um and then realized oh, hold on a minute this guy's been doing this for years he knows not to kill anybody yeah so um, he's he's allowed by by yeah. experience alone to pull off the tombstone. But it, it's like at a time. Oh, God oh damn wow! Yeah, it's going to go through right outside. Um, I mean, I mean, saying things like that. I mean, uh, we're going back to the, this game having like the fatality, so to speak. Wrestling yeah. did get to a point where these wrestlers were almost committing fatalities to each other in the ring. I've seen explosive barbed wire, yeah, tables, ladders, chairs, steel cages, hell in cells, and coffins. Like what hasn't been put into a wrestling ring yet? Uh, there is not. There is not a lot. I mean, obviously, over time they were just like, we need to keep the crowd more excited. We need to, we need to blade ourselves so that we can bleed. We need to give them blood. We need to hit them with chairs. God damn it! I died again. <laughs> um, you know, and yeah, it, it just got more and more extreme. And obviously, that's where we got to ECW coming along with, with and they took. Paul Heyman took a lot of the stuff he'd saw in Japan and applied it, you know, because the Japanese, they ain't, they ain't scared of anything. Yeah. They'll, they'll fucking do backflips off of buildings just to, you know. Just to get the crowd riled up. Just to up. get the crowd riled up, yeah. up to make the, make the money. And then, um, and 
so they had to bring it to America. Yeah. And they had to do it there as well. And So um, um, you've mentioned Paul Heyman. I guess wrestling people are going to know who he is, uh, along with Vince McMahon. But yeah. Do you want to just mention who, who they are? Well, obviously, Vin Vincent Kennedy McMahon is the, the all-powerful, all-seeing evil that runs the WWE. With his with his family and Shane McMahon and Linda and and Stephanie McMahon, you know, um, Paul Heyman was a commentator for WCW before he went on and bought uh, Eastern Championship Wrestling and turned it into Extreme Championship Wrestling. Who were quite close to WWE back in the Monday Night Wars. Yeah. And then um, on top of that, you've got well, he wasn't the owner; he was the guy in charge. Though you had Eric Bischoff and Vince Russo, who were in charge of WCW. Uh, WCW, if you don't know, <laughs> are out of business now oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you know they were they were they were practically owned by oh, jump in, Paul Driver. Nice, come here, Doink. Come here. I'm gonna finish this match with you. Go. Didn't Shane McMahon buy one of those companies out at some point? That, that was a, that a it, it was it was a story. You know, he it was supposed to lead up to a fight between Vince and Shane for ownership of WCW, but they decided to go against it and yeah. con concentrate on WWE. There was no point keeping alive a show sure. that you'd already destroyed and sunk. sunk. Yeah, as you would, which was your competitor. It would be just dragging it out. That's it. it. That's it. I mean, I I I, I remember fondly being there in the Monday Night Wars not obviously live because I couldn't afford to go to America you just gouge out four eyeballs <laughs> yeah yeah and, <laughs> and my chains we got rid of my chains as well um, but you know every Friday getting to watch Raw on uh, Sky Sports at the same time as WCW was on TCN would you stop blocking Bret Hart and seeing these shows go up against one another and for a time WCW had its had its stuff you know it had the new world order that it just went the wrong way with mm -hmm. you know it had hulk hogan and scott hall and kevin nash and it had all these stars and so the wwe had to just work harder yeah. you know Shawn michaels worked harder and he is a goddamn hard worker yeah the undertaker been, yeah the undertaker yeah. you know he did all of his things with the burning ma uh, the inferno matches and the uh hell in a cells and the casket matches and things like that then on top of that stone cold steve austin d generation x triple h i mean jesus christ triple h he owns <laughs> he's bought into the company now Pretty he's part much. of the family yeah you know that guy knows how to work uh and just being there and watching these guys go at it. Yeah, he's had some of my, uh, speaking of Triple H, he's... Uh, he is your favourite, He is my he? favourite wrestler. I think he's had some of the most outstanding matches in wrestling, in the WWE or WWF wrestling history. Yeah. Against he, The Rock, against Stone Cold. Against, against Mankind, Mankind, yeah. Against Undertaker, yeah. He's been against them all. He's even been against Brock Lesnar and beat him. Yeah. So, you know, but... That was in Triple H's heyday. Um, I guess yeah, now he's the businessman side of things now. But well, well, this is it. I mean, back in the day when we were younger, we thought Hulk Hogan was immortal. Exactly. We were good. We were and sold. Now, and now he's what a sexist, racist, <laughs> dried up, fucking washed up Hollywood has been. Yeah. Well, and it's like, damn, that used to be my. That was my '80s idol. You know. Well, this is it. The the, the thing I find is that suburban commando all yeah. the way. You know. Ego, <laughs> egos just. Yes, Egos just yes. got the, the better of them, you know. They were, you know, like like Hulk Hogan, for example, you know, built up to be this star for all the kids. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. But then he decides, oh, hold on a minute, I want to do something else, so I'll go to WCW. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But then he goes to WCW, he remodels himself into Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Which... Now, well, what, just going to go back a minute, because yeah. in my, my childhood memory, it was that Son of a he had a match against The Undertaker, and The Undertaker retired him. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. did. He did. Right. The under well, the uh, the Undertaker won the championship from Hulk Hogan. The Undertaker's first year in the company wins the championship from the guy at yeah. top, and that was kind of the birth of the new generation. You yeah, know, the dark like, side. Yeah, but, yeah. It's like right, we, we're pushing like the these... ultimate warrior. He was psychotic, but he wasn't a heel, so yeah. to speak. Well, no, but the, in the background, the ultimate warrior's attitude towards Vince McMahon was yeah. horrible. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. he's like, I'm not working. I'm not going to do what you tell me to. I'm going to do what I want to. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can't do that. You, this is your boss. Yeah. You know, this is your boss and you're going to do as you're told or we're going to use somebody else. And so many times the ultimate warrior no-showed um, no-showed matches that he was supposed to be in. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, that's letting down the fans. Big time, you know, yeah. Now yeah. the now the owner of the company has to run around and change it. Somebody else has to take your place. Yeah, okay, they rectified all of their problems 
later on, luckily, before the yes. Ulmer Warrior passed. Yeah. But the Ulmer Warrior went to went to WCW, and some of his matches in WCW were just horrible. Oh, they weren't young enough anymore. Yeah. To send them by. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't young enough anymore to pull off the moves that they had done 10 years before. Yeah. yeah. So, the, you know, all those fans who were going to see WCW were like, why am I watching this crap? I might as well go watch Stone Cold Steve Austin beat the crap out of Vince McMahon. Yeah. You know, that's what? how that's how WWE <laughs> managed to survive because they were like, okay, we're not going to kill each kill ourselves. But we've got to just make it entertaining. So what do we do? We take the boss of the company and we put him in a wrestling ring. Yeah, and we put him through the ringer. And we put him through I'm the ringer. I'm going to say credit to Vince McMahon because he fought almost every single one of those wrestlers. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> his his match his match versus his own Shane at, at WrestleMania, yeah. it, uh, one of the greatest, greatest moments in the match is when um, Vince McMahon is stuck in the corner and Shane puts a bin in front of his face and goes and goes climbs in. the opposite corner and, and jumps. Fly kicks across the and ring. Fly into kicks him. it in the yeah. face, and I'm like, he doesn't have to do that. No. You know, he is, he is rich enough. Vince McMahon is rich enough. He does not have to do that. But <laughs> he's like, screw it. I want to be one of the guys. You know, I want to yeah. be respected with the rest of the wrestlers. I need to understand what they're, what they're doing, what they're going through. So we'll do it. And. God damn you, Razor Ramon! <laughs> so, who's your favourite wrestler of all time? Oh, he, well, of all time. Of all time, it's got to be the Undertaker, hands down. Okay. I had, I, you know, he was one of the first, one of the first guys I ever saw uh, wrestle. I loved his character. Just I loved the way that he, you know, the way he looked, he moved in the ring. The fact that he moved. Like he was supernatural. Natural. Yeah. You know, walking the, the top way he rope. gets back up after escaping a, t t you know, a pinfall. Yeah, right? that's it. Just taking a finisher out. and just sitting bolt upright without yeah. even moving. And yeah. the fact that you got the fear from the other wrestler's face, so that made you scared for Brilliant. the other wrestler because yeah. you're thinking, how is this going to end? They sold it well. They sold yeah. it well. Um, so who's your favorite wrestler of the modern generation, the new generation? Oh, you know what? That's, that's, that's a good question because there are so many. I mean, a lot of people, I, a, lot of, a lot of people that I usually talk to about wrestling and they were like, oh, I don't watch it anymore because it's kind of turned shit. And I'm like, why? Do you've got all these new stars. I mean, he's retired now, but Daniel Bryan, Edge, um, yeah. you know, John Cena is is another big one. I, I've got massive respect for John Cena for what he does. Mm -hmm. CM Punk was another amazing one. I mean, you've got Kevin Owens at the moment. You've got Dolph Ziggler, who's another hard worker. Uh, oh, I, I, I gotta bring up the new day. I didn't want to do this in the video, but the new day at the moment are they're a new faction in, right. in wrestling at the moment. And it's uh, Biggie Langston, Xavier Woods, and Kofi Kingston. And at first, names. They, yeah, they. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know who any of these people are. Well, this is it. This is it. At first, the the the, the three African American wrestlers, yeah. and a lot of people go on about how they think Vince McMahon is racist, and I, I don't get that because he's given a lot of. He's had a lot of international wrestlers. Yeah, and there's... a lot of American uh, African American wrestlers. Yeah. He's given a lot of good title shots, like uh, um, Farouk. Back yes, in the day, yeah, head of yeah. the nation, he was going up for the championship at one point. Okay, they didn't win these matches, but they pulled off some great matches. Um, and so you've got these three guys in the New Day, and their their faction started off as kind of like a, a religious sect. They would yeah. come out clapping, singing, telling everybody to believe in the New Day, and the, the crowd didn't get over with them because who who wants to? You know, we yeah. we don't want religion in us no not when you're going to wrestling yeah <laughs> well now now the new day come out they beat me again it's not easy they beat me again <laughs> the new day now come out you've got xavier woods uh blowing a trombone you've got biggie langston who's a quite a big guy he's dancing and right. then you've got you've got kofi kingston who's going on about unicorns and unicorn horns so it's all just fun and they are just really fun to get behind. And so everybody's <laughs> starting to get behind them now. That's a weird thing with factions in WWE. You either get that you suck until that faction no longer exists. Or, yeah. you know, the, or, the crowd gets behind it. Or the crowd gets behind it. And you can never, you can what's, never work out. What's your out. favorite wrestling gimmick that's ever been, ever run for a character in oh, the wrestling stories? Gimmicks. I'll tell you mine right now. Okay, yeah, I'm you tell me yours. Mine. You remember a wrestler called Al Snow? Yeah. He was, I used to love the hardcore, the hardcore matches. And Al Snow 
Joe was was just one of those characters that just never won anything. I mean, I remember it was 24-7 hardcore rules for yep. the hardcore title belt, so anyone could pin anyone anywhere for that belt. <laughs> yeah. And those people fighting each other in the bathrooms, locker rooms, you know, car parks. Yeah. But I remember there was a series where Al Snow had taken so much brain damage from his fighting <laughs> yeah. that he had a new co-op partner, which was a mop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There was another wrestler, but I can't remember what he was called. You had the mop. Perry Saturn. Perry Saturn. I just Saturn. remembered Moppy. Yes. And the fact that Perry Saturn and Raven had a match where Moppy got ended up ended Ind up, up being put in a wood chipper. Yes. And, yeah. and Moppy yeah. was destroyed. The, the background, <laughs> I mean, I read a lot of the background stories for it, and I think that actually came about. Perry Saturn had joined WWE with the Radicals with yeah. Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Chris Benoit. And they were all going off and doing their own little thing. And Chris Benoit was, you know, before the tragedy befell him, was yeah. on his way to becoming a big champion. champion. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero. He was Intercontinental for a while, yeah. Yeah, Eddie Guerrero went on, became champion and tag champion Latino for a while. E? Latino <laughs> Heat. Uh, Dean Malenko. I mean, he'd already done loads of matches back in WCW, so there was not really much he could do anymore. Yeah. And I don't think there was anybody who could actually keep up with him because he was that good. Mm -hmm. um, but Perry Saturn was supposed to be going on for tag championships and stuff like that but he I think he got drunk backstage and upset the wrong people and that's how he ended up with the moppy character, the character. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, so your punishment is you're going to walk around with this mop as your tag team partner, as your tag team partner <laughs> and be worried and it will, it will cost you matches you know it will, you will you will yeah. lose matches because your mop is disappeared and yeah. things like that it's horrible but the <laughs> fact the fact that you've had people like triple h yeah who's, who've, who've been punished yeah you know for like a whole year maybe two years triple h lost every match he went into mm -hmm. and sucked it up yeah sucked it up to the point where vince mcmahon turned around to him and says you've done well yeah here's a here's a shot yeah. in the continental championship here's another shot world heavyweight yeah. championship here's a shot my daughter's face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit rude. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Well, he took it. <laughs> <laughs> she took it. She Somebody took it. Took it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, God damn it. I'm yoga suit up too slow. Man, now. did you just drop like two fat turkeys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because I'm a sumo wrestler. <laughs> ah, come on. Okay, so who's your favorite wrestler from the golden era of wrestling? Ah, uh, golden era. Well, I mean, technically, I could cheat and say The Undertaker because he did come in towards the end. End of the Golden Era. Um, I'm going to say pre-Undertaker then. Oh, but see, well, I mean, Mark Calloway, who played The Undertaker, was always in WCW anyway back in the Golden Era. Are, we, yeah. are you are you meaning Golden Era of WWF? Yes, you know? yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, my, my knowledge of the other wrestling companies is only limited. Yeah, um, I, well, I was always a massive fan. Even when he was evil, I was a big fan of The Big Boss Man. The Big Boss Man, yeah. 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 The Big Boss Man, I, I just love his I remember his a cage persona. match with him with the police dogs. Oh, the kennel from hell match. Yes, I remember that. That, yeah. that was against Al Snow. Yep, yep, of course. Because, yep. because the Big Boss Man cut up Al Snow's dog mm -hmm. and got Al Snow to eat it. Yeah. And so they had a kennel from hell match. Can't see that anymore. No. <laughs> and there's a, there's a reason. There's a reason why they didn't show this on the pay per view. But as Al Snow and and Big Boss Man are fighting in a hell in a cell with the dogs on the outside, the dogs are supposed to be ferocious animals. Yeah. But they were nervous from the crowd, the crowd and yeah. the cameras and the lights and the heat and things like that. So they started having sex and pooping and <laughs> peeing all, all over the, the place. <laughs> So the fans in the front row <laughs> couldn't see the match because they were too busy trying not to vomit. <laughs> it's like who comes up with these matches and thinks that's a good idea, you know? But, I mean, go, going from that, I mean, WCW had Vi Viagra on a pole match towards their stint. Uh, okay. You know, you had to force feed your opponent the Viagra and then, you know, that person wouldn't be able to wrestle because they had to maintain an erection. So they just scamper off backstage. Yeah, so just yeah. It was obviously <laughs> with that trying to counter bra and panty matches from WWF. You just couldn't do it. Yeah. You couldn't do it. You wanted to see the girls strip down to their bras and panties. You well, know, well, that's what they were there for. Were, that, they, that. Did, were they there to wrestle? Well, yeah. Some of them did go on to, to do. To be fair, some of them did do, 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 do some I mean, good Lita, Trish Stratus, Victoria, Tori. I got beaten again. God damn it! Right. Okay, we're gonna get Lex Luger out for the. 
last few minutes. Well, yep, and this will be your last. I, I last know this match. This half this half hour video was supposed to be me getting to the championship. This is match eleven, win zero. I, I practiced like <laughs> hell. I practiced like hell, but you know, I get on here and it's like no, you're not so, winning. What, what's the next event coming up? The next oh, the event. next big wrestling event soon is After going to be ro the Royal Rumble in ah. January. Do which... you have anyone pegged as your Royal Rumble winner? I, I do actually, obviously, because it is the road to WrestleMania starting at Royal Rumble. Um, at the moment, Roman Reigns is the new champion. Okay. And Isn't this due to an injury or stipulation of something? Yeah, like Se Seth Rollins was champion at first, and then he busted his knee in during a match, and had to vacate the title basically so they had a survivor series set up and roman reigns won it um and samoa joe who is a big time wrestler from the indie circuit and tna has just recently joined nxt and samoa joe if you've if you never heard of him never seen any of the matches he's absolutely amazing and he's part of obviously the samoan wrestling family tradition yeah. from those islands and I think he is related to Roman Reigns by cousin or auntie or something like that. And so my money is that Samoa Joe will join the Rumble. Okay. Win it. And win it. Yeah. Start his stint on Raw and the WWF and pay per view to the top from there. And then yeah. he will head to he will head to WrestleMania and win the title. Nice. That is my pick. Uh, right, I Alrighty, have lost well, you, with you, everybody. You have lost with everyone, Ian, and uh, that's going to be the end of this video. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just want to say thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back next Friday with another video game. Of course, our film reviews go up every Thursday. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Twitter, and <laughs> yeah. on Twitter, and on Patreon. <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.